Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Hope you've been having a great day. A lot of things have been taking place in the EV space if you've been keeping up. Uh, for example, the, the EPA just proposed some of the most stringent rules ever as far as emission standards, where a lot of these auto industries are gonna really have to step their game up when it comes to producing EVs. And also, NEVI funding requirements just went through. And you have a lot of automakers right now that are deciding to switch over to the Tesla standard. Or are they? There are a lot of games being played right now. And I would urge you not to believe everything you see or hear. Because these people are playing chess and poker. Uh, you're talking about billions of dollars at stake. This is a high stake game. And there may be a lot of jobs on the line too as far as you know who, whoever wins in this space. So what we're going to be discussing is how the transition to EVs is going to really impact some of these legacy automakers. And do they really even want to produce EVs? Because you may have some, you, some people serious about producing EVs like Rivian and, and Tesla and Lucid because those are pure EV companies. But do you have some pretenders out there also? And do you have some people out there just faking a the funk? <laughs> they have, don't want to have anything to do with EVs. And they're going to do whatever they can to kill it like somebody killed the EV1, and I'm sure you probably know who that is. But this is just the first part of a series of videos I'm gonna be doing, and this, this video, I'm just gonna be giving a general overview, but I'm gonna be making a series of other videos breaking down each auto manufacturer and what I believe their strategy may be going forward in this transition to EVs and how they're gonna handle all these new EPA rules gonna be put in place, and who's gonna impact it the most. And also at the end of this video, I'm gonna get my prediction or what I believe that the big three auto giants are gonna do as far as EV transition. And let's go ahead and get into this. So to start, I wanna show you a list of the top 25 selling vehicles in America last year. And I wanna kinda of build a case so you can get a better understanding. I wanna build a context so you can probably determine who would benefit from the EV transition and who stands to probably lose the most and why they may want to deploy strategies that are not really EV friendly. So let's go ahead and get started with this. And this is a from Car and Driver magazine and this is the 25 best selling cars and trucks and SUVs of 2022. And so I'm gonna just go ahead and go down this list starting with number 25. So at number 25 on the list we have the Honda Civic. And at number 24, we have the Ford Escape. And number 23, Nissan Altima. At the 22 position, the Subaru Outback. 21, Mazda CX-5. And 20, we have the Honda Accord. 19, we have the Subaru Crosstrek. And 18, we have the Hyundai Tucson. And at number 17, we have the Jeep Wrangler. And at 16, we have the Nissan Rogue. And at 15, we have the Tesla Model 3, and that's the first electric vehicle on the list. And at 14, we have the Ford Explorer. And 13, we have the Chevy Equinox. And at number 12, we have the Toyota Corolla. And at 11, we have the Toyota Highlander. And in the top 10, and I'll slow down and go give a little more information on these. So at number 10, we have the Jeep Grand Cherokee and they sold 223,345 units. And that's an SUV. And at number nine, we have the next electric vehicle, the Tesla Model Y. And that's at 231,400 units. And at number eight, we have the Toyota Tacoma, a truck. And that sold 237,323 units. At number seven, we have the Honda CRV, and that sold 238,155 units. Number six, the GMC Sierra, another big truck, and that sold 241,522 units. At number five, we have the Toyota Camry, and that sold 295,201 units. Number four, we have the Toyota RAV4, at basically 400,000 units. And at number three, we're in the top three now, the, the top three vehicles. 
And at number three, we have the Ram pickup. And that sold 468,344 units. And at number two, we have the Chevy Silverado at 513,354 units sold. And at number one, we have the Ford F-Series, which sold 653,957 units. By far the most on the list. So after going through that list, anything on that list surprise you? Well, I'm gonna have to say it definitely surprised me. And what surprised me is how many trucks and SUVs are in the top 10. I already heard that, that Ford was the best-selling truck, but I did not realize it was just the best-selling vehicle, period, and by such a large amount. And the next selling vehicle after that is another truck, which sells quite a bit. And then after that is another truck. The top three are trucks, and I just that is very surprising to me. And so, as you knowing this, you can probably understand, you know, what type of strategies that these companies are going to have to, to employ because they don't make their bread and butter off of cars. So a company like Tesla that only makes cars, they can really carve a space for themselves in the EV market. And see, the difference between making a car and a truck is huge, especially in the EV space, because these batteries are so expensive. And so you can make a car that gets around 300 miles of range and that can do car stuff because cars really just transport people from here to there. But a truck is different, especially something designed to be a work truck. It's gonna to have to be able to tow. It's gonna to have to be able to move heavy equipment. It's gonna to have to be able to do a lot of things that have to be very durable. And that's why people purchase trucks because of their versatility. But a truck as an electric vehicle is very expensive to produce and is very difficult to make a profit off electric vehicle. And someone may say, hey, but uh, Rivian is doing it. I can almost guarantee that Rivian is doing it at a loss. And one thing about Rivian is that, yes, it's an electric truck, but it's not a traditional work truck. That is more of an adventure vehicle, more along the lines of a Jeep Gladiator, not in the lines of uh, something like a Ford F-150, which the people who purchase all things purchase it for work stuff, to pull stuff, to haul stuff. Uh, where Rivian is designed to go out on adventures, to go camping, to do off-roading. Those are two different things. And I would venture to say that Rivian is not profitable, that they're not selling their vehicles at a high enough price point to get a return on investment. I would almost guarantee that Rivian is losing money right now for every vehicle that they produce. And one thing that we do know is that Ford already said they lost $3 billion dollars you know, just the ramping up of production for their electric trucks. And they recently said they're going to have to lay off workers because their their electric division is so unprofitable that it's really costing a lot of money and they're saying it's going to cost jobs. And so companies like Ford and GM are going to be put at a, a big disadvantage because the technology is just simply not there to produce a battery that's, that's a good enough for a work truck is just not there and we're probably a very long way from from getting there and so if they get into this electrical space they're just gonna they only stand to lose money because the technology is not there and i know the epa just came out with these new rules to really uh st stricken the epa standards in fact by 2032 uh 67 percent of all automakers vehicles are going to have to be electric and so what does this mean for these companies that produce these big trucks? America loves big trucks and SUVs, but they cannot. The technology is not there uh, to produce them at any type of cost that would be other than the law. So why would they do that? Why would they put themselves in that situation? And so if, I, if it were me, if I was in that place, I would try my hardest to slow this down. I would try to lobby to get this change. You can say, how would you do this? And this is my prediction. This is what I would do. Um, this is, I mean, we have election season coming up. We're actually starting election season right now. If not really, we're already in election season. And the union is in talks right now. So you have a lot of things going on. The union is negotiating our contract. And, you know, between now and November, uh, so that's a big thing that's going on right now. The presidential election is going on. And plus you have a bunch of Senate and, and, and House seats. 
So what strategy do I think that these automakers are gonna employ in order to put themselves in a better position? If it were me, I would try to slow it down if not stop it. And the way I would use that and how I would go about doing this is the political mechanism. It's an election season. And right now you already see Ford is kind of going down that pathway and say, hey, these electric vehicles are gonna make, we already have to lay people off because we're losing so much money. And now you're gonna you're gonna start to hear GM say that. And right now we're they're they're in negotiation. The UAW is ready to have their big negotiation uh, with all these big automakers. So that is another component. You got the political component in there. There's an election season, and you cannot have a bunch of your constituents losing jobs in an election season that's based on a bill uh, called the American Job Act. That's just not a good look if you want to get back into office. And also. The opposition party doesn't like electric vehicles. They would like to kill it. And so if you can just stall long enough, you might be lucky enough to get a new party in that's going to roll back all of these restrictions. That's the first thing they are probably going to do because this will, unfortunately, will kill a bunch of jobs. It's going to kill a lot of union jobs um, because electrical vehicles have fewer parts. In fact, that's one of the reasons that Toyota stated uh, that they didn't want to really jump into this business because it's going to cost millions of jobs because electric cars have fewer parts and it takes less people to make them. And so there's a lot of components to this that people were not really understanding and just how how detrimental this could be. While you're saying it may be good for the environment, it may not be good for your neighbor who does not have a job anymore. And so th that is something that all of these people were thinking about. And these companies want to stay in business. So the best thing for them to do is stall. And, to, and for me, uh, I would drum up the fact that we're losing jobs. We got to lay people off in the middle of an election season. And then you get the union bosses come out really against this stuff and saying how it's going to hurt and kill jobs and kill communities. And and a union vote is big in an election year. And so uh, that's what I, I would do. And I'm pretty sure that's what Ford and for sure GM is doing. I was just saying like these, this, like this, this deal with uh, the Tesla connector, that's all smoke and mirrors. I'm telling you people do not believe everything you hear and see because it's not everything that you see is not what it appears. There's a lot of working on. I'm going to show you one of my, in my upcoming videos. I'm going to give you some proof as to what I mean about these deals and not what you think they are. They're not as solid as what you think they are. These automobile companies are at war with each other. Let me tell you, they are at war. They are trying to take each other out. Ford is trying to take out GM and GM is trying to take out Ford. And Tesla's trying to take both of them out. And so, but we're going to discuss all of this. So what is my prediction? What do I think is going to end up happening? Just my overall general uh, prediction. I believe that the legacy automakers are going to be successful in delaying all of these new restrictions and maybe getting some concessions because it's an election season. And the Democratic Party needs these union voters to win some of these battleground states such as Michigan, you're probably going to have to win Michigan to win the election. And and if the America Jobs Act end up cre creating a lot of unemployment for union workers and blue other blue collar workers, that is not going to bode well during an election year. And in a closely contested election, and the last election was very close and this one more likely was going to be very close, if not closer. You cannot stand to lose votes. That is why these legacy automakers are going to win. They have a lot of leverage. And if I were them, I would flex that leverage as strong as possible because their very survival is at stake. And also what's at stake is that, you know, anyone who's lover of gas vehicles gets a good chance that you would never be able to get one because they're, they're really trying to, these, these laws are designed to really trying to get rid of these uh, big gas trucks and SUVs. But uh, let me know what you think in the comments. And uh, that's all I have for today. And I'd like to thank you for joining me again. And I can't wait to see you on the next video. And also uh, like and subscribe also if you haven't subscribed yet, if you like the content. But take care.